You're listening to Mystic Lounge with Alan B. Smith. Rebroadcast on the Onyx Network, Thursdays at 11 p.m. Pacific, Fridays at 2 a.m. Eastern. I'm Alan B. Smith. Joining me is Dr. Vasilios Basios. He is a researcher in physical complex systems at University of Brussels and is one of the recipients of the Institute of Noetic Sciences uh, Linda G. O'Brien Award for groundbreaking research in consciousness. Uh, we have had a number of IONS guests fairly recently, and the reason for that is because I'm particularly interested in consciousness studies and they're doing some really interesting work in that field so i'm honored to have our guest on uh tonight if you miss any of these shows you can always catch the rebroadcast on the unx network at 2 a.m eastern standard time fridays or 11 p.m pacific time on thursday night and of course the podcast will drop wherever you listen to your all your podcast uh platforms uh wherever you listen to your podcasts and um yeah, I'd really appreciate if you could like, comment, you know, give a review and um, subscribe on the YouTube channel because all of that organically really helps the podcast and the channel grow. So um, I appreciate everyone who supported us so far and all of your continued support. I really, really appreciate. All right. So let's bring on our guest. Vasilios, how are you? Hi, hi, Anna. How are you? Very good. Very good. Uh, thank you so much for for being on. Uh, right now, this no, the, is the, the honor enjoys all mine. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, so this is early in the morning, uh, as far as doing a recording goes for me. I'm usually a night night owl uh, mm -hmm. with the show, so <laughs> I have I have a slight slight bit of a delay in my cognitive abilities <laughs> until the coffee really kicks in. <laughs> Speaking of consciousness, um, but how are you? You're about what seven hours ahead in in. Yes, this, this is just after lunch, which again, mm -hmm. it's siesta time. <laughs> <laughs> so we are both in the good, relaxed mood for. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, so, we need we need siesta in the United States. We really do. You see, I'm a, I'm originally from Greece. I have been transplanted to mm -hmm. northern climates. Mm -hmm. And and which climate do you prefer? Ah, actually, I, I love the, the, the Belgian climate because it's uh, very uh, variable. So they, they say summer was on, on on Wednesday this year. So <laughs> so it's like you know never you never know what's going to happen. And it's yeah. Little, yeah, yeah. And in, in, in Greece, it's too hot now. Especially now with the climate change and all that, it's, it's, it's this, this the, the, uh, yeah. the last summers are very very hot. But I, I, yeah, yeah, I think the future migration for a lot of people is going to be north and in, into northern countries. It makes sense. It's it's going to get cooler. Um, it's going to be get warmer, and so, yeah. Yeah, everybody is surprised, but that this is happening. People have been talking about that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's talk about your your work. Can you tell us a little bit about your your history as a as a scientist and how it led um, to your working with uh, ions? It's it's not a glorious history. <laughs> I mean, just just um, I, I always loved physics from from uh, from little boy. Mm -hmm. uh, I always uh, wanted to be, and I, and thank God I had the the the. the the right input and, and impetus of, of, from from my family and uh, to go on study whatever I wanted with that uh, because they believe that if you do something that you really enjoy that makes you happy and makes you mm -hmm. uh, not success is not the word there here is more kind of uh, good with your nice feeling nice with yourself and feeling a purposeful life mm -hmm. uh, no matter whether you are successful or not in the eyes of so. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so it's my purpose, or, or one of my purposes, uh, to study nature. Mm -hmm. Later came the other purpose that, that kind of emerged to, the, to, to study 
the nature of this study, why I am studying nature. And with this awakening of self-reflection came um, a kind of, uh, as your title of Mystic Lounge has it a little more kind of mystical <laughs> uh, dimension or, or what we call it a mystical dimension that it, it, it went beyond science and reached out mm -hmm. to spilled out to metaphysics, philosophy, and all that. Yeah, does does mystical, the, can that not also be science? Uh, if we start from the beginning, and, and sorry for my Greek perversion of with words, mystic comes from uh, something that cannot be told. I like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I can, it, it, it's a secret. Yeah, mystic, um, mysterious. Mm -hmm. Mysterious, yes. Uh, so uh, the the secret is of two kinds. One is a secret that you know you and I share, and we don't change it. No, nobody mm -hmm. knows. We or, or a group of people conspire to, to to elect someone for president or whatever. You know. Mm -hmm. So this kind of secret, which is intrapersonal secret, and this is the other secret, which is a secret, the, the taste of coffee that you just had. I know what it is because I had also a, a sip of coffee right now, mm -hmm. and but I cannot really get into your experience into your own coffiness, <laughs> sure. the experience of, you know, the experience of coffiness. Or, so this is a secret also. It's a subjective secret. And that was what was taught in, in, in the mysteries. When, when people uh, were attending the mysteries, there was a show. It was not a dogma. It was not mm -hmm. a narration. It was a, a, a theater with all the healing power of the theater. But mm -hmm. yeah, in that sense, in that sense, subjective, Yes, can be scientific. Right. So if we unlock a mystery, then that secret that once was becomes fact or, or science. We can we can look at it from, from an objective point of view. Uh, mm. gravity, for instance, right? We we mm -hmm. we have a a good idea. Of how it we know we know how it functions, but we don't technically know what it is. So it's both at the same time. Mm -hmm. no, nobody nobody knows what gravity is really right. is. Uh, like like we don't know any anything about. I mean, not anything, but we don't, we don't really know in the sense that we can define mm -hmm. fundamental uh, fundamental substances or fundamental concepts. Because they're fundamental, they don't. They don't. Foundation rests on the ground. Does not rest on anything or anything. In any other foundation. So if gravity, because it's space time, it's fundamental. The the split started in uh, in Western mind around the end of the Renaissance in 1600, and it was a dramatic event that we separated. Galileo was forced to separate the subjective secondary qualities mm -hmm. with the primary objective qualities so objective it was what it could be measured analyzed by especially with um, the, the the instruments of physics or reduced to some analysis with interest instruments that, that they, they show you something physical in the screen a number something mm -hmm. uh, so that will be the experimental hard sciences and then all the other sciences arts humanities were delegated to subjective experiences not really you know something that at that moment they thought that they could reduce it to primary qualities mm -hmm. and the secondary qualities were delegated to artists uh, bishops and so they would separate physics from religion because that was a traumatic experience from the west i think it's the only civilization that uh, had this class, many people were burned at the stake with, with, with first of the great Giordano Bruno, mm -hmm. who paid the price willingly to, to change the world, to, to help bring, bring back the Pythagorean uh, doctrines, so to speak, back in science. Mm -hmm. uh, Galileo retreated and said, okay, guys, 
I don't want that. <laughs> uh, let's talk about primary qualities, things that we can measure in the in, in the lab. Yes, yes. And 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 uh, it, it, it didn't. It, it started very kind, very. It's basically, very kind, he was saying something that you could see, something that you yes. could, just tangible. Yeah. Yes, because he he thought that this way he will escape dogma and theology. Mm -hmm. Now. Although you know the fa the famous scene where he he asked the bishops in Padua to to to, to look, look through their his telescope and the bishop said no 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 we don't need to look uh, we know what it is you know you, I mean the, the Bible has everything so we don't want to look it in a sense we have we are living in a Galileo moment this time now because we we all have subjective experiences people are having a lot of. Uh, experiences that cannot be reduced yeah. to modern science like near-death experience uh, uh, alter states of consciousness either by drugs or by practices breathing whatever uh, and these um, experiences are not neuroscience thing things that oops that's nino sorry hey nino. <laughs> <laughs> hi nino so this is um we're, we're cat uh, fans on this on this show. So. Sorry, yes. <laughs> more than <welcome. laughs> Even if there's not a cat on the on the on the on the show, it has to you have to put it in by. <laughs> right, right, <exactly. laughs> yeah, yeah. My my, she, uh, my my cat. She used to come up on the desk more often. Now she just kind of circles around yeah, below. Realizes. Uh, so sorry for that. And um, but I. I I guess he has a point because we also t tend to, to 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 see everything that is not human and has this divine, uh, apocalyptic, biblical, whatever how you what we want to say consciousness as a, as a machine. So uh, animals would be, in the eyes of science, is machines, famously mm -hmm. declared by Descartes. So that's why you can experiment with uh, with them without asking their opinion, or you can eat you can eat them alive, or you can do whatever you want. Okay, thanks, Descartes. <laughs> so, uh, although he loves his dogs, anyway. Right. There's a, there's a lot of that even today, right? It's mm. it's you know there are certain mammals that we absolutely love and yeah. would be horrified if they're hurt, but other mammals, psh, all good. You, you know, can kill them. It, it, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Yeah. And also, and also, uh, I mean, my wife has been um, a vegetarian. I, I'll try to to be as moral as possible, but then we realized one day that we are feeding our cats cat food, which is other animals. Yes, this is a this is a, this is a. <laughs> I have an internal conflict about this. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> so, as they say, analyze that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's it's living it's living with a. a a true dichotomy it's you know having two belief systems simultaneously um, opposing belief systems mm. at the same time which is something that we have to, to learn to live with if yeah because yeah. we're encountering complexity at many levels and at, at any scale sure and uh, there you have as you say duality like like subjective objective um, mm -hmm. measurable non-measurable Many things that are very important, the, the things that really count cannot be measured, they cannot be counted. Mm -hmm. And the things that can be measured are irrelevant. I mean, most of the time can can be irrelevant. Why? Do, yeah. Irrelevant to what? The data, but but uh, I mean, you can measure everything. You can measure mm -hmm. the, 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 the thickness of the sheet of a paper. You can measure how many... Uh, flies passed by the last moment that we have been talking does it make sense just because you measure something if you don't have the theory and the and the background the conceptual um, conceptual receptacle to to, to put receptacle. it in mm -hmm. receptacle sorry to to put it in and examine it the, the facts are are, are passing through the net of uh, consciousness without registered. You need, and the theory is a net. The theory is a net that can catch out, out some part of the world and and, mm -hmm. and contain it and, and make you analyze it, think about it. But it's not the whole thing. The, yeah. 
the ocean is there. We just get a, a little grasp. Um, re related to the, uh, what I guess some might call alternative work that you're focused mm -hmm. on, the, the mind of science and scientists it is sometimes flexible and sometimes uh, extraordinarily stubborn. Mm -hmm. um, and recently, I had, I had a read an article about a year and a half ago, I think. I'm, I, I can't I can't remember, uh, suggesting that the age of the universe might be much much older. Uh, and but no one was talking about it. And then there were some articles that said no that 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 was like a misinterpretation of mm -hmm. something. And I thought, oh, okay, I guess I made a mistake. But then recently, there are a, a couple of uh, uh, physicists and uh, astronomers that had come out and said, based on some of the imaging from James Webb Telescope, there seems to be a contradiction, uh, not a contradiction, but a challenge to the age of the universe based on the where the distance of the galaxies and the the color of their, their infrared light. Um, and so... They're saying that based on that, if we go on that data, it's conceivable the universe is something like 26, you know, 0.7 billion years old, not 13.5. Um, and, I, and I found it interesting that these were legitimate scientists. And I, I saw a couple of articles go out on the subject, which doesn't normally happen unless there is some legit legitimacy to the claim. And then it went silent again, and I'm I'm not hearing anything else about it. But what's your take on that? Uh, I, I would ask a, cos a cosmologist friend, <laughs> Bernard Carho, that I trust his opinion because I cannot have all the theoretical background and, and data mm -hmm. to analyze that. But as a, as a phenomenon, it's a very familiar mm -hmm. phenomenon. I, I mean, in scientific uh, discourse, yeah. because. Um, uh, I was blessed to 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 have joined the the, the, the Solvay Institute in the early days of my career in uh, working with a group of, of Elia Brigosin, uh, a Nobel Prize in physical chemistry, and has, and also kind of founders of complex design. So there there people where you had a lot of Nobel Prize people coming in and joining discussions and all that. Now, the correct theory is my theory. The, 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 this is the, the, the ultimate criterion uh -huh. of, of, of truth. That, that I felt a little kind of disappointed because I would see all these brilliant minds, but yeah. they were there were morally drafts. They were kind of, you know, hmm, little me, 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 me. And that plays a big role in science. Me and money, and my money, and my theory, my project. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to blame all my fellow scientists but science is science is moving like a sleepwalker in it sometimes we assume things that we don't really realize that we have assumed we, we make a step and we fall we make another step and we are good and and we continue like that and uh, yes this is part of science and this is fun mm -hmm. if you don't cling to your own little objectification of the of the universe and think that this is the absolute truth and if this is not true i am doomed and stupid and nobody will talk to me and nobody will love me right, right. Uh, that that is, has to change this is the ethos of science that is is, is destructive for the moment and yeah. I, mm. oh i'm sorry I, I just want to say i think that you tapped into something that hasn't really come up oftentimes the argument for why scientists don't take on you know more um you know fringe scientific studies is because they're afraid to lose the funding. But I yeah. think that you just you tapped into something that maybe speaks a little bit louder than that, is that there's an emotional uh, component that perhaps they, they want to be liked, right? Everybody wants to be liked, especially by your peers. And so if you feel that you'll be ostracized and you'll lose friendships and lose relationships because of your um, ideas, your novel thinking, then that, from an emotional, psychologically, sure. it, it, it's scary. And so it may not just be about money for some scientists. Some scientists, it might just be a social thing. S salary is important. 
Well, right. Right. You, <laughs> you can't you can't chat around the the cafeteria if you don't have a job. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, so here, your research for for ions. Um, it, it was you and some, some other scientists, of course. You won the award for detecting deviations from random activity as indications of consciousness beyond the brain. Uh, what? Yes. <laughs> what is beyond? What's beyond the brain? Where? Where does that study take you? As, as we have been just uh, touching the subject of of, of of science as a social uh, activity, mm -hmm. with French fun, which French fans fun and <laughs> enemies and whatever goes together with with uh, human nature. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 science doesn't happen in a vacuum. Yeah. Uh, there is a continu continuation and, and uh, we have to acknowledge I, the fact that we are always building on the work of someone, of the generations, not only one or two people, but of generations behind us. And, mm -hmm. and we leave some work for the generation to come. Maybe the most difficult part of the work. Anyway, so um, what happens is that historically, uh, this, this um, this this line of research started by analyzing phenomena that defy uh, the the the, the, the 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 hypothesis that uh, consciousness is a product of the brain, mm -hmm. like uh, bile is a product of our digestive system. Mm -hmm. So what, this is what again trying to reduce like Galileo and Fans uh, the the the. the subjective to the objective, we thought that we are complicated machines, a little more complicated than animals, maybe blessed with a divine spark like Descartes. Mm -hmm. So we're different than animals and we have connection directly with, with God. So this uh, thing that we call consciousness is, is just a response to stimuli. And that was a behavior, this became known as a behavioral aspect or the behavioral school in neuroscience so they they thought that if you put if you put enough electrodes on the brain you can understand mm -hmm. how the person feels they can even uh, advertise uh, machines that can dream they can they can record your dreams and you can see them again yeah, <laughs> yeah. right that that that's interesting mm, okay well I, I mean if you imagine that you can record some sort of imagery that your brain is generating it does give the impression impression that the brain is nothing more than a, a, a biological machine which is not which is not Be, uh, well uh, you see when Descartes was saying that everything include ducks cats dogs whatever are complicated machines mm -hmm. The other underground mystical uh, current was um, advocated by people like Leibniz and Newton, the great uh, hidden sorcerers of modern science. Mm -hmm. So Leibniz has some, said something that really struck me and for me resolved this, that he was talking about the, mon the monad, which the monad for Leibniz is the Pythagorean monad, which is a carrier of the soul the one mm -hmm. that reflects uh, the whole, the part that reflects the whole. Uh, so it's a reflection of God, the contraction of God or whatever. So that was the, the theology of, of Pythagoreanism that Leibniz put it in, in, a, in a very strict, a very, very nice logical scheme, mm -hmm. updated, uh, updated for his, uh, his time. And there he said something that struck me. He said that, of course, automata, he did not call the machines automata. Uh, living beings are, automata, but they are divine at automata. Whether, because a divine automaton is automaton up to the last part of it, down to infinity. Whether a one-made machine is a, a finite automaton that has to stop somewhere. So you have clocks and, 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 and rings that will work together, but at a, at a certain scale, it stops. But a divine machine, a divine automaton, it's not automaton, it says, it says that it's infinitely mm. down, cannot be reduced to any mechanism. There's always something like a fractal kind of thing in our... Sure, terminology. sure. Well, uh, so yeah, can, uh, Buddhists have talked about this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, Leibniz was very in, uh, 
and, and in general, the, the Pythagoreans in the West mm. were very kind of, uh, you know, in tune with uh, mm. the East, Buddhism and eating and all that. Yeah. But again, it was not uncovered until the 70s that we, uh, thanks to Fritz Capra, then his book, The Tao of Physics, which created like a, a, a consciousness expansion in, in my generation. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yes, the, the, these truths are kind of um, intuitively grasped, but not academically expressed. And definitely, they are not good for making bombs and refrigerators and uh, things that you can sell in the market. Mm -hmm. But some scientists would make the argument that the age of philosophy is over. Philosophy is not science. Um, what's your take on that, that, that sort of attitude? Oh, yeah. Uh, the absence of metaphysics is a metaphysical position. If you deny that there's nothing beyond the physical, mm -hmm. it is a metaphysical position. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is another kind of metaphysics. Yeah. Yes, it's another kind of philosophy. So declaring that uh, philosophy is dead because my philosophy is has won, mm -hmm. doesn't say anything about the absence of philosophy. Well, uh, yeah, but, but, but philosophy, you, you can't, isn't a method methodology for discovering sure. truth or facts. Yes. Right? So uh, is there still a place for philosophy in science? There's a, definitely an only, not a, not a place, a, 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 it, it's, it's, a, it, it, it's a need, it's, a, it's an oxygen for science. Ah, uh, there the was the, the last attempt to, to to eliminate philosophy was in Vienna cycle, where mm -hmm. in, the, in the 30s or so, you had this positivism mm -hmm. that, that, as you said, that, that or logical positivism, that, that they try to reduce everything to very well defined logical propositions. Mm -hmm. So truth could be reduced to a kind of proof system. Right. That happened and that stopped by the great work of, of Gedel, who used Kurt Gedel, uh, that uh, he turned the, the thing on his chest, saying that, uh, based on, 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 on Russell's paradox, that, that says that this sentence, well, I'm paraphrasing here, that this sentence is not true. So if you accept that it's not true, it is true. And if you accept that it's true, it's not true. So you get this Gedelian non-linear thinking. This is a kind of a complexity at work. Mm -hmm. uh, then you he, he opened up, and this is something that, that uh, the, the philosophers Zeno of uh, uh, in the old times, you see platonic dialogues with these kinds of tricks, like uh, the, the Achilles and the tortoise, that, that who is running faster, or the, mm -hmm. the arrow that never reaches its, uh, it, its uh, target. So you have this nonlinear thinking of, of um, reflecting the logic on itself that creates a paradox. Mm -hmm. And it is exactly what we said that the philosophy that, de that denies philosophy is still a philosophy. Uh, science that says that I don't need philosophy, it's a philosophical stance. Um, so that's what they wanted to, to, to do, and it has been destroyed by Kurt Gödel forever. Uh, it can, we cannot, we don't know how to uh, absolutely formalize truth. We have to live mm -hmm. with that. We have to live that our definitions are partial, yeah. and can can never be complete and and coherent at the same time. Uh, Vasilios, can you click your microphone down just a, a tad bit? Yes, there you go. Okay. Sorry. No, it's alright. Um, so so, okay, so speaking of philosophers, so, so Socrates, um, according to, to Plato, you know, saw him himself more as the, the midwife, right? The, mm -hmm, exactly. he, he didn't think of himself as, as a particularly brilliant person coming up with new ideas. His, his function was to help usher in new ideas, you know, to get other, other people, other smart people to, to think oh, about things. Yes. Right? Yeah. Or to discover our own uh, uh, idea. Mm -hmm. So each one, each one has has to, to find what is all about by for for himself. 
and that teaches us humidity and, and uh, humility and and uh, compassion and and living together. Mm -hmm. It's we don't have to fight for opinions or or, or positions. Yeah. This can change. What doesn't change is is, is us as as human beings. Uh, I prefer to change my my position than change the population that doesn't agree with my position. Otherwise, we become Stalin's and Hitler's, you know, because mm -hmm. whoever doesn't agree with us off goes to Auschwitz. Uh, I mean, exaggerating, but no, no, I, I not, but I, not I, exaggerating, but not exaggerating. You right, know, we know what I mean. You know, mm -hmm. so. Uh, so this this uh although though, i think that the, in that case there was quite a bit of dishonesty in in their conviction it was a convenient <laughs> convenient conviction not necessarily an intellectually honest one about about the people yeah. and i think that we, we see that too i think in, in science as well right Yes, uh, I have a, a kind of um, passion for history of science, and now I am reading about Bellarmine, the the guy who condemned to Dano Bruno, and also was a great chief uh, investigator, holy investigator of the church, the Jesuit, mm -hmm. uh, for who was persecuting Galileo Galilei, and the guy has some notes and some kind of uh, kind of reflections, mm -hmm. and he's really concerned about. What is truth? I mean, he, he believed that he had to burn alive Bruno and, he, and the heretics, and that the, the Pythagoreans yeah. would, would destroy the, the 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 fabric of church. For for him was really a compassion, adoration of Christ, adoration of love, and all that. He, so it is kind of uh, you know we are grasping, and we make love an object, and an institution. And, and, and science and religion becomes an institution, a crystallized structure, and we're grasping on this crystallized structure and forget the experience, the subjective. How does it feel really to, to love? Does it feel mm -hmm. like killing people when you love? I don't think that anybody in, in, uh, in, in love could kill. And how does it feel to be a good Christian and follow Christ? Does it mean that you have to have a strict rules, institutions, punishment, hell, whatever? Mm -hmm. So we we're kind of, of we're getting blocked in our own mental um, jails, or whatever cells. Yeah, I'm just uh, okay. But he, yeah, no, no, just for, as, you, as you said, yeah, he was genuine. I mean, it was convenient for many, many other bishops. For him, he was struggling after his last his deathbed, whether mm -hmm. he did the right thing or not. And he was yeah. trying to say, yeah, yeah, I, I should have condemned him because his soul now rests with, with God and he can redeem himself. Otherwise, he would go around being a sinner. Right. Uh, so, and, and he had to, to, to punish the scientists because they're doing things that pe people will be scared to know that Earth goes around the sun and will be creating mm -hmm. social chaos and we should take care of our fellow citizens not to become lunatic. Yeah, anyway, of course. So, yeah. um, so, in regard to that, the conception of the soul, let's say, according to you know, the Catholic Church or, or, or religion in general, is that similar to the non-corporeal consciousness that you're studying? Kind of, yes. I mean, they, yes, I, I prefer to call it uh, monad, like Leibniz, but that's my, my, my uh, again, uh, Pythagorean perversion. It's, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't cling to that. You can call it many names, and it will be called many names because everyone can bring something different. It is uns, unspeakable, so you can speak of it in many ways. So if you like it, soul, because, fine. If you like it, uh, energy source, the guy that has that that put me in into this work, uh, Bob Jan and, and Brenda Dun, Dan, sorry, I pronounce it all the French way, Brenda Dan and uh, Bob Jan from Princeton, mm -hmm. they used to call it the source, to give it a more kind of scientific, uh, science fiction kind of. Uh, mm -hmm. It could be the. I don't know the, the the great spaghetti is that there is a religion about spaghetti the monster, but, that, but, that, <laughs> well, that's, but that's a but that's from like an, an a philosophical atheist, yeah, um, 
to to that th- that is actually designed to dis- disprove and mock. Yeah, yeah. Well, another very pleasant concept was is, is the Manitou, the great spirit of nature of the American Indians, which uh, are lovely, or, or the, mm-hmm. the Tao, or Zeus, the, I mean the, the ancient Greek creator, or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you you name it, it it will change anyway. I mean, <laughs> what... right? But there's but there's a difference between. And we can talk more about your your work, but there's a difference mm-hmm. between studying consciousness and whether it can be detected beyond the mm-hmm. body. That and something that survives, you know, post mortem. Yes, definitely. So where where are you on that? Like, if you've detected that consciousness expands beyond the the, the brain matter, now now. What's your interpretation of that as far as it being something that's strictly attached to our bodies? Yes. Uh, first of all, uh, it, my experience, and I have, because I have I have my share of losses in in life uh, from early age, uh, it is a con- it, it is deeply as true as as the coffee that you drink, uh, this kind of secret, that love is much more stronger than death. If something is is stronger than death is is, is love and our Mm -hmm. relationship with with departed people. Mm -hmm. And this is not, it, it, it sounds poetic, but for some people it's not. I mean, it's 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 something that you 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 have to to either feel it or not. It's it's like again tasting. It's, it's a secret. It's a it's, it's tasting coffee. If you don't have it, if if you never taste coffee, you, then then you're missing out. <laughs> yes, yeah, some yeah, or not? Maybe not because it's, yeah, maybe it's, bitter, not, maybe it's not. Bit, bitter sweet. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe that, maybe so, that's why I like coffee. It's a it's a reflection of life. It's it could be bittersweet, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it keeps you going. Um, so, right. So you're you're talking about so, love. Where did you come up with this idea that that love is so powerful that it it it, it it's not an idea. It, it, it's not an idea. It, it 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 is a feeling from my personal experience. Now setting that apart. Uh, this well, before, before we go further, let's. What is what is your personal experience then? <clears throat> I it's it's having having lost uh, my 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 father at fifteen, mm-hmm. and then my later in life at my 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 mother and my two brothers very shortly after my mother. Oh, so it was a, it was a, uh, and um, thank well, thank I... God from my for my catch and my wife <laughs> and my my yeah. work that that um well what i meant more was uh, i i assumed you had some kind of experience where you felt their presence uh, uh many many no no it, it was not a, something like a revelation that's lasted one it, it's a continuous uh, cohabitation let's say mm, but isn't that more of just your mind uh, uh, remembering them and incorporating it into your conscious you know thoughts uh Maybe yes, but mm-hmm. the thing is that uh, let, let me let me philosophize a little on that too, mm-hmm. because it, it's something I, I told you. It's something that I cannot communicate otherwise. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I'm not a great poet or, or, or an artist to to express myself like that, but I, I think that I put myself my, my my mind together and think as I have been trained to think, saying that something which is. Uh, absent in uh, from our measurements but yet determines our measurements and this is consciousness mm-hmm. or what we call consciousness or the monad or whatever um it is like a, like a container or, or or a boundary that 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 it's not there but mm-hmm. has implications of what's happening inside the boundary okay it, it's a constraint that determines the dynamics at the lower level. So we have the the, 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 the dynamics at the physical level, but mm-hmm. there's something else on top of that, which is 
not necessarily it is co-emerging with the substrate so it's not off the substrate but it lives with the substrate so um, let's say that you are boiling rice mm -hmm. you boil rice you have a round thing a round pot and and you discover that you have hexagons the rice falls in hexagons mm -hmm. right these hexagons are, are part are not part of the equation of motion of its rice little rice it is part of the boundary that keeps the whole system together plus the gradient in temperature so the whole configuration the constraint mm -hmm. of a complex system makes the complex system uh, show patterns like the the hurricane patterns right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the 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 hurricane is around a point where the point is not part of the hurricane because it doesn't move so it's zero velocity mm -hmm. but still if it if there's not if you cannot create this point by mm -hmm. the boundaries about the other things that move around you don't have a swilling that's a good analogy yeah you are you are a good communicator so i <laughs> think <Yeah. laughs> so this, this is this is something like us i mean we are you know atoms that can change every seven mm -hmm. 12 17 years depending on the organ mm -hmm. uh, and cells dna everything come and goes but something that keeps them together which not necessarily a guy inside of me pulling the strings mm -hmm. it is something which is from outside uh, it, it's like a swirl in the on the ocean you you feel that there's a center but the center is because of the boundaries so we feel that we have this ego but we are part of the big skin scene mm -hmm. so um, and, and, and they would say atma is brahma so if, if i just one sure. <laughs> uh, uh, so what we are is not part of space and time where we go is not part of space and time mm -hmm. and love is not part of space and time and in my mm -hmm. little philosophical musing is that therefore love is not part of the space and time drama and mm -hmm. it's yeah. it, it, because it's an emotion it's a relation it, it's a it's a it's a it's a relation it's not part of the of the substance so that makes me think that it is stronger than the pattern that it, it creates we can measure brain activity mm -hmm. according to emotions. So we, 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 we have, a, have a way of chart charting when someone is experiencing a particular emotion. So just so you're saying just because we can, can measure that activity, that doesn't mean it is bound to just the, the brain activity that so are you saying it's sourced from somewhere else where is that coming from i another alternative explanation is that uh, there is a source which uh, somehow we are getting in touch with that in mm -hmm. the same way that uh, you know the radio receiver yeah uh, I think there, there, I, there's something interesting about love you know it just always it always comes up you know that, that particular word uh but of course like all languages, that word has different inferences um, and, and, and variations of, of its meaning, right? Um, it's be like, I love chocolate. Well, that's not the same as, you know, I, I love my, my wife. It's a, that's a very different use of the word. Um, and I think we're all pretty much smart enough to understand that. Um, but there is this kind of universal grand love that, that, that I think you're speaking of too, uh, that is beyond boundaries. It's beyond judgment. Um, it, that it, there's something there's something mystical about that, and that's that's why that's where I, I definitely sync with you because I I feel like there, there's something almost intangible uh, about it. No matter how many definitions one tries to put on love, it, it doesn't really encompass that experience In, uh, yes uh, and, and, and you know there, there's a, a night uh, for me it, it helped me because uh, uh, humor also 
or, or serious humor, I should say. Uh, it, it's, it's helpful in that respect because it's part mm-hmm. of love and the creative game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Isaac Asimov, the mm-hmm. great guy. I, I, I love him <laughs> and um, I love his, no- his novels mm-hmm. uh, at one moment. And, and you, you see, these, these are the moments that they, sometimes you, you, you get this glimpse of, of light and you stay for it. I remember I was in a bus in Greece, undergraduate, mm-hmm. and I was going to, to, my, to the university thing. Mm-hmm. And um, I had a little pocketbook and there I, I, Asimov says, uh, they are encountering Earth, the fourth planet of the solar system, and uh, the, the, this this extraterrestrial being saying that they are in on their way of uh, um, the, the the civilization has not reached the the galactic level to con- to connect with them. Mm-hmm. You see, they only have discovered the universal law of love in it in its material form and they call it newton's gravity (laughs) (laughs) yeah so there are other forms and other causalities Uh that are not part of newton's or einstein's gravity Uh, so we 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 have a very good understanding a grasp on newton's Gravity. You know, gravity. Things that keeps things together. Yes, we, we see it. We observe it. It's it's easy yeah. to see. Right. Yes. And and, and also in, in Einstein it is is the relations that, that keeps things together, like space and time relations. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a fabric of of, uh, of <laughs> relational quant qualities that mm-hmm. makes uh, things attract. In your research, have you seen any relationship between time and, and consciousness? No, not in my research, as, as in, uh, in the things that I publish for, for a living, no. But in my research as independent researcher, yes. Mm-hmm. So, Did, Is consciousness then, is it still tied to our idea of linear time or does it? Definitely. Mm. Consciousness, as we understand it now, it it, it starts with birth and ends with death, mm-hmm. and uh, it has to be some somehow attached to a machine. I mean, to machinery, sure. uh, human human being, animals. Uh, some people talk about bacterial consciousness. They are kind of mm-hmm. the the. Um, Psychicists of, of uh, that they are right. coming back back from uh, t- t- with with the ghost of, of the, the Pythagoreans and Bruno to hunt us mm-hmm. from the past because we excluded them. So they are kind of the last resort of materialism. Uh, but still, even if if they are pan psychicists or pan entheist, is a difference in the sense that, that pan entheist is that people believe that everything is, you know something a source of love whatever mm-hmm, that, that mm-hmm. Perma- permeates everything yeah where where psyche is also mm-hmm. can be connected with the body and psyche soul starts with the body ends with the body this is like more conventional way of thinking and the last resort of there are many many um places in neuroscience and even books written on the fact that the, we do not have a one-to-one correlation between our brain activity and uh, subjective experience. This mm-hmm. is standard. That's why they call it new correlates and not cause. Consciousness. Cause. Yeah, um, we have had near-death experiencers who've, who've had complete, you know, death of brain activity and heart uh, come back and and have memories. Uh, or have seen things in, in an operating room or, or what have you that they shouldn't have otherwise uh, been able to perceive. And then you have some very long, you know, term deaths, like a 13 minutes or just something like that, where there's, or longer, where there's no brain activity and someone's been able to been brought, brought back to de- uh, life. If that's the case, and then they're, they're, they are themselves again, does that mean this external or extended consciousness, it stuck around, it hung around the body, or 
it, like a magnet it just came you know Oof. right back because because i wonder the these you know bodies you know my wife and i were talking about this recently these cryogenically you know yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 bodies in stasis if 100 years from now 200 years from now science has a way to you know bring them back to life in full capacity without cellular brain damage and, and all this what you know what kind of mind do you imagine that 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 will be that person will be screwed up yeah <laughs> imagine you wake up in a hundred years from now yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not the best experience <laughs> yeah, <totally effed. laughs> yeah okay but well I mean, again, it, might be wor- it might be not just be that but then maybe they're psychopaths too I mean, if if right. you if you if you think, I mean, it's it's not uh, something that cannot be done. But who yeah. wants to sleep for two hundred years? That's a nightmare. Some people do. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I uh, there are people because who've been in comas for twenty years, that's um, true. And, and that that's traumatic. But you know what? The human mind is really adaptable, and and you know, there's probably a period of rem- of um, uh, uh, grieving after waking up, grieving the past, grieving that mm. all those memories uh, are, are only with you now and there's no one to, sh- to really share that with. Yeah. But then there's the, the advent- adventure of life. And, and I imagine most people who are willingly going into cryogenic stasis, they're, they have the mind that's, that's able to, to adapt. Yeah, exactly. As you said, uh, next, next to town, in uh, in in Belgium here, there is a, 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 com- a big big um, coma clinic, and it has been. It, it, they are very successful in identifying coma states and uh, helping people come back from coma. And mm-hmm. well, in the main, I, I had s- several discussions with them and uh, a kind of little collaboration that uh, again, the Smet was the name, the great professor there, mm-hmm. and he was. We're t- t- talking all the time. He, he was a fr- uh, one of the big sorts of, of uh, the Solvay crowd. And uh, he was telling me all the time that um, you cannot, there are deep levels of anesthesia. And he liked to have the iceberg. And he said, we, have, we are like an iceberg. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can have an as- anesthesia, which is down at the root of the iceberg. And you cannot feel anything uh, on top, but you are still in the ocean. Mm-hmm. And that was the feeling that he was describing from his patients. He never had an experience himself of this ocean, but he said, I don't have it. I have it only in my meditation, in my philosophical musings, or when I listen to music or whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I know that everybody in, in my patient, the way they describe is that we go down in, in an abyss. And this abyss is there. It's not mm-hmm. something that does not exist. It's not in existence. It's a different form of undifferentiated existence mm-hmm. but it's there and and then they describe themselves as they go up and wake up from the coma or whatever as climbing a mountain or or or, or the, the, the the horizon becoming more clear suddenly there is a horizon before there was no horizon suddenly there is something that says up and down and yeah. so they have this experience of, of climbing up a mountain top or, or an iceberg according to the smith he like he liked this metaphor and he also liked that because of, of jung also use this metaphor of the subconscious and process right. now so so the end but we, but you never there are people who are in deep coma and they can see everything and they can hear everything their loved ones grieving and telling them to come back or telling them just the stories of of the family you know they just mm-hmm. sit next to them and say how the, the the boy went to school and how the girl had a, a great exam passing and blah 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 you know just yeah uh, so that means that there's some imperceptible sensor something. of some sort, something that's picking up the the data around them and yes. and and bringing it into the the consciousness. But but it shouldn't be because the brain is shut down in such a way that it, it shouldn't be able to log yes. memory, right? Yeah, and and the, and the strange thing is that at at the, he he might be able to see the or feel something mm-hmm. about relatives and family and they can operate and they, they can amputate and yeah. he doesn't really realize that he ha- has been cut half open, you know? Yeah. And I, one of the team 
I should not say the name, but one of the team that we we all won the prize, and I, mm-hmm. I, I highlight that we all won the prize. Mm-hmm. Wolf was the leader on this because he believed that we can do it, and he we did it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but in our team we have a different ethos and and and, and kind of more collegial fun. Mm-hmm. So I, I cannot differentiate. Some of us have written something, others have written other stuff. Mm-hmm. Other people have just written one sentence, but very important. Yeah. So we are all part of that. So it's sure. it's, it's, it's not it's not that it's my work, uh, although it's my work because it's my team. <laughs> yeah, of course. And if, yeah. And everybody says the same. He's not a leader, you know. Everybody would say my team. One of our team then. Sorry, to, the, he had an near death experience, and he's a physicist, and we have talked about that extensively over the years. And he had this near-death experience um, that marked him. And he's, he always says that uh, once you learn how to fly, you cannot live with your head looking down mm-hmm. on the ground anymore. You That's know? true. Yep. Uh, and, and, and although... And he goes on with with very many explanations. His explanation is that, and I agree with that theoretically and mm-hmm. experientially from meditation, not from near death experience, that you off you go to this other reality, which is totally other, no space, no time, mm-hmm. but there is there is still it is still relational. There is something there that that connects you with things, and that is what I think that the mystics and the sages would call love or universal love this is something that connects us with everything yeah yeah there, there's there's the really i really really truly believe that there's a something like that like a, a universal love with a capital u capital l um <laughs> some 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 people may call that god i i don't like that word because it, it comes just because it comes charged with mm. all this other stories and you know, uh, hell and damnation and yeah, fire yeah. and brimstone, <laughs> which doesn't fit into my conception of what I have felt and experienced that universal, you know, love. And um, so I, I, I find it interesting that um, other people that I've spoken to at, uh, at IONS has, have mentioned the word love in, in regard to their, their consciousness research i I see this have um, or have not have have okay (laughs) have Have. yeah Hmm. um is that a emotional bias or do you do you really Mm -hmm. think that there's something scientifically we can like grasp Hmm. a if it's emotional bias are emotions to be discarded or are they real? Mm. There is work being done on emotions as being substantial, not material, but really real. Mm-hmm. And uh, their feedbacks and their interrelationship. Uh, Pale Kaufman, it's a, it's a, uh, Catherine Pale Kaufman has been doing that, a wonderful lady. And um, the one thing is that should should we dis- disregard something because it's emotional? Maybe there is some substance on that. The other thing is that uh, again, like like uh, from, I have I have to borrow the wisdom of the past. And Buddha was saying was asked in in Heart Sutra. I said, uh, Master, aren't we all one? I realize now in my practice that we are all one. And and the Hathagata Buddha said, I mean, the, the, the historical Buddha said, uh, if we are all one, who is speaking? So it, so that's one or another thing of that, that, that sometimes hit you and stay with you for the rest of the life. Yeah. Uh, and it, it is like that in the sense that, uh, okay, it is love and everything, but we cannot it's it's not cannot be expressed thousands and billions and millions of, of people 
have danced and, and, and expressed their feelings and they have great civilizations and, and, and wrote poems, great yeah. arts, architecture, to express this feeling. And it will be coming back and back and back because it is unspeakable, unexpressible. Yes. But, but what is, again, imprinted in mm -hmm. the materialistic, real life that we live is the interconnections because of that force mm -hmm. that keeps everything together. These interconnections are becoming more and more and more evident in, at, at the psychological level, at the ecological level, at the social level, at the planetary level, at the intergalactic level, mm -hmm. at, the, at the universe level. More and more, uh, Hawkins was, was um, Right, that this this century is a century of complexity. Mm -hmm. uh, you, say, you said before, we have the Webb telescope that goes in the depths of the universe, bringing back information from the beginning of what we think that is the beginning of the universe. And we realize that everything is so delicately connected together, you know, from the constants of nature, that if, if there was a little wrong number in the in the... 15th digit, everything will be upside down and we will not have ears or eyes. Yeah, and yeah. Whatever. Right. You, know, you know, the anthropic principle thing. From the way we live together, I mean, we, we are talking now and, and, and through cables that people lay down, mm -hmm. through energy that other people gathered, harvested, put it in our uh, electricity. Uh, so mm -hmm. you can plug in from one part of the world and I can click from, from the other. Yeah. And we think that we are talking, but it's not us, it's everybody else who did that. Right. Uh, I mean, from, 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 from and, and, and the trees that have been destroyed in, in Amazon to, to fuel this uh, yeah. technology and all that. So we, we are embedded and we realize now that we are forever interconnected, mm -hmm. we want it or not. Yeah, so in regard to the, but the Buddha is saying is like, well, if 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 we're all one, who's speaking? Anyone who has had either a out of body experience, a near death experience, uh, transcendental meditation experience, a, a a a mystical rhapsody that was sudden and unexpected, um, or psychedelic, or whatever it is, they have this experience of another oneness of consciousness, a, a oneness that when they're in that state makes sense. They can, it, it, they can feel it. But when they try, when they come back to the conscious mind and try to express it, mm -hmm. it's it, like you said, it's inexpressible. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It's just that our brains are not structured in a way so that we have the, the ability to present what that experience is, is other than trying to be poetic and trying, you know, representation in, in art form. Um, and, and music, I think, is one of the most profound mm -hmm. ways of, of doing yeah. that because it can, it can really give you a sense and a feeling of something without, without descriptives. Because that's what it is. It's, it's almost, un, it's undescribable. Yeah. Yeah. In, 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 in Greece, again, another encounter. Which is, uh, we were discussing drinking wine in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the by the seashore and, and uh, we were philosophizing. You know, again, young students. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy there who was very wise, older senior man, kind of a <coughs> sorry mm -hmm. of a local sage. And then we end, and as you said, we cannot express anymore. And then he said, okay, guys, you cannot define it. You cannot talk about it. Why don't you dance it for me? Uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you can dance it. Right. You can yeah. sing it. Yeah. Well, so, right, right, right. It's, it's um, what seems like perhaps a, a paradox to, to our our minds, you know, within, within these bodies, 
what we perceive as an sort of almost impossible paradox in that altered state makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's and that's that's the challenge is is and i think that's all connected to your study in consciousness because my hope is that that through the scientific study of consciousness we'll, we'll find a way to bridge between those yeah. mystical experiences and our uh cognitive abilities to um understand it but so we're we're at the end may, may, oh may sure I... yeah just, just to, uh, I, it's, it's like the advertisement of our sponsors. <laughs> Go for it. I, I am, I am part of exactly like that. I am part of the Galileo Commission, which uh, the, the the two heads of our commission, Marjorie Woolcott and uh, David Lorimer, have published, have collected stories from academics mm -hmm. that say exactly that. They, they 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 narrate their experiences. There are many experiences coming from from uh, opening the door of the of, of the of the refrigerator and blowing blown out to to space from uh, drugs, from uh, intense emotion, from uh, that they all have a transformative experience and you mm -hmm. describe exact. It's called spiritual awakenings, yeah. and it's and for, for what is important is that academics and scientists talk about that. It is the age of coming out. Rupert Sheldrake said that when we first got together to, to form the Galileo Commission, he said jokingly over drinks, he said, you know something, we look, we, I think that we are like the gay community in the 60s, that we all have this feeling that we are okay, you know, it's nothing mm -hmm. bad, but society will not accept us. Uh -huh. So the scientists that they have this kind of mystical awakening uh, or, or spiritual awakening or, you know, encounter with a different reality or seeing God, whatever you like. It is like that. They, they, they cannot put it in the agenda. They are afraid that they would be accused of, of pseudoscience. They cannot talk about soul. They cannot talk about emotions. They cannot talk about secondary qualities because still we are afraid that we are going to be not burned alive, but ridiculed yeah. and lose our salaries. So it's little by little, uh, scientists go out. My dream would be to have a little video mm -hmm. para paraphrasing the, the Mercury, Freddie Mercury, the great. Mm. You know, I want to be free. I want yeah. to break free. <laughs> I want to break free. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> to, to, have, to have scientists go to, to dancing around in the labs. <laughs> I like that. That's a good visual and a good song too. All right. Dr. Basios, thank you so much for, for being on. I, I really appreciate it. If you can leave us with just you. one uh, succinct thought, what would it be? Socrates used to say that an un unexamined life is not worth living. Mm. We can paraphrase it saying that a science of consciousness that does not self-reflect on itself is not worth having. It's not me who said that, it's a friend, Emilius Buratinas. But I, that's... Yes. Yeah. with me all right beautiful thank you so much i really appreciate thank it you, sir. all right and thank you everyone for joining us for another episode of mystic lounge which is rebroadcast on the unx network special thanks to race hobbs and margie k from the unx network and if you like this episode and other content please subscribe like and click the notification bell so you don't miss up miss out on any upcoming shows and of course if you listen to the podcast please um rate and review there all that really helps the the program continue to grow thank you so much peace and love and until next time everyone live in the mystery